What does the film say? The all 22 about this Lions edition. We'll talk about it with Ted Wynn from The Athletic. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? Matt Derry back with you on another edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Tuesday, April 2nd into Wednesday, April 3rd. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. That includes on a Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We appreciate you subscribing and checking us out on the YouTube channel. Locked On Lions today brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Our guest today from the athletic.com, the all 22 guru, the guy that knows uh, just about everything about the NFL. Great writer for the athletic.com. Ted Wynn is our guest today. We'll talk some lions with Ted. What's going on, brother? Uh, nothing much, you know, just trying to survive draft and uh, catch it up on all these draft prospects. And, um, you know, it's supposed to be a quiet time of the year, but uh, sometimes it feels like it's busier than in season. Oh, I don't think there's any question. I was, I was scrolling through your Twitter feed or X or whatever we're calling it these days. You're a big Drake May fan, I saw, huh? Yeah, I like Drake May a lot. And, um, you know, I think there's people in the league that feel the same way. I think, you know, he's – I think there's some guys in the national spotlight that don't like him that have put – uh, you know, Jaden Daniels way ahead of him. That's kind of uh, colluding the conversation. But I just think Drake May has all the tools you want. And, you know, it, if you were an Anthony Richardson guy, um, guy like I, I, I was a big Anthony Richardson guy last year, mm-hmm. uh, Drake May is much further ahead of him in, you know, a ton of different areas, maybe not um, athleticism, of course. But, um, you know, he like if you're looking, if you like those, quarterbacks that you want to project because they have those big physical tools like why wouldn't you love drake may i I feel like the issues that he has are correctable and um anybody that is you know saying that he has these huge issues i I just question uh what they're seeing let me ask you this if you're the bears would you are you somebody that would take drake may over caleb williams or you're not willing to go that far not willing to go that far um, mm-hmm. just because I think Caleb Williams has some sp- just special talent, but yeah. I do think that May is closer to Williams than any other prospect in this draft. And I think Drake May would be a number one pick in most drafts if uh, you don't have a guy like Caleb Williams in. Well, we're in Michigan, as you know. J.J. McCarthy's getting a lot of love. Uh, doesn't sound like you would put J.J. in Drake's class, though, huh? No, I, I wouldn't. I, I understand why teams love him. Um, I, I gave him more of a second round grade, but I did acknowledge that he's going to get pushed into the first round uh, just because okay. of the, the quarterback thirst there is in the league and the, the need there is for, for quarterbacks. And uh, he, he just flashes those traits that uh, you know people uh, want in their quarterbacks. But to me, it's just scary drafting just based on these flashes, you know, um, and not a very huge sample size. And he just wasn't the driving force for that. Uh, Michigan team because they had a great defense and a great running game and the formula won them uh, a national championship. Uh, but I can understand why coaches love him. Um, you know, I'm, if you told me that JJ McCarthy would be a lock top five pick, which looks like it's going to be the case this coming draft um, during the college football season, I, I'd be stunned, but uh, mm-hmm. that's the way things are looking right now. Ted Wynn with us from the athletica.com. All right, Ted, what are your thoughts on the Lions and what took place this past season? 14 wins, two of them, of course, coming in the postseason. 30 minutes away from a Super Bowl on obviously the meltdown in the NFC Championship game. But how, how do you assess Detroit last year and what they've done this offseason so far? Yeah, I think I was pretty early on with um, the, hyping up the Lions, um, even last season, just watching their offense, watching what Ben Johnson put together. And that offensive line and how they were able to run all these different run concepts and uh, be so versatile and, and how they just differentiated themselves from teams in the league. They were, they, they were such a unique team just because of all the um, teams were moving towards zone running and they were running head on just with these gap scheme concepts and just punishing teams. 
um, and giving defenses the looks that they they normally don't won't get. Um, and I was there at that Niner um, the Niner Lion game in the mm-hmm. NFC Championship, um, and they just had so many opportunities to end that game. They just couldn't take advantage of it, of in the second half. But I mean, obviously they're moving towards the right direction. Um, you know, Jared Goff is playing some of the best football of his career. Um, they have one of the best rosters in the league, and they nailed last year's draft. I mean, that's got to be one of the best draft classes in the last couple decades. Um, you know, when you get that many plus starters and possible stars uh, from one draft, it's pretty amazing. So if they could just get even one or two uh, starters from this year's draft, uh, they're going to be a great position to possibly put themselves in Super Bowl conversation once again. What do you think of the offseason so far? You know, I've had a lot of guests on, and obviously I talk about it every day. This was not a free agent hole where the Lions did what Houston did or Tennessee did and broke the bank, but a lot of really solid signings. And as Brad Holmes said, all the guys on his A-list, he he, he brought in. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Carlton Davis is a really good man corner, exactly what um, the Lions are looking for. I I, I followed Meek Roberson's career since he um, – since he he was even in college, I, I just loved his game. So it's just you know undersized. I mean, if he was two inches taller with a, you know a little bit longer arms, he'd probably be you know one of those top tier corners in the in the league. But uh, he plays big for his size, and uh, he, he makes he makes a lot of plays on the ball. Surprisingly, for for a guy that is as short as he is, uh, so I just love what he brings to the Lions, attitude wise, and uh, you know that's he's a great man, very good man corner as well. Um, so. Yeah, I, I like that addition, and I thought they were smart in bringing in DJ Reader, who's going to mm-hmm. help with that run defense. And even though their run defense numbers were very solid last year, when I watched them, I, I thought it was they were very aggressive. Their linebackers were very aggressive coming up to the line of scrimmage, and that hurt them in the play-action game. So even though they were good uh, run defense-wise, I just thought they were – um, just a little too aggressive and getting a guy like DJ reader and adding some beef to that line uh, just helps you um, just be able to hold up those blockers and, and give your linebackers a little bit more time. So they don't have to sell out against run all, to, uh, all the time. And, and Marcus Davenport, you know, if he can stay healthy, he, he's a, extremely strong on the run on the edge as well. So, um, you know, of course, every addition comes with some injury risk. Um, so hopefully those guys can stay healthy, but if they can stay healthy, um, I see them as great scheme fits uh, and exact what the the lines need. Going back to the reader situation was interesting. He was on uh, Kay Adams' show today and said, you know, the lions gave me a one-way ticket. They were not letting me out of the building. And, you know, years ago, free agents would come in to visit Allen park and they would leave. Ted, it was just like, not the place to be all of a sudden Detroit is, is is a destination. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you have Dan Campbell, who players love to play for. Um, I, I think you have some great, good coordinators, Ben Johnson. Um, I think they just build a great culture that uh, people want to be a part of. It's a it's young team, young ascending team. Um, and, you know, credit to them. I, I think they are a destination team now. Ted Wynn went up uh, with us from The Athletic. I want to talk all 22, a little draft, a little uh, free agency, and certainly the rest of the NFC and, and the North as well, where the lines kind of stack up. In the NFC, we'll do all of that with Ted coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. And Locked On Lions today is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're looking for a therapist or somebody to talk to or thinking about therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. Question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know it's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters most to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking about starting up therapy, like I said, why don't you give BetterHelp a try? Here's how it works. It's it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And what's great about BetterHelp is you could switch therapists anytime you want to for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOn. Ted Wynn with us from TheAthletica.com, a NFL writer, talking a little Lions today on a Tuesday. You said, by the way, Ted, that you were at the game in, in San Francisco. 
uh, halftime? Are you texting friends like, oh my God, the Lions are going to the Super Bowl? What was what was, what was your thought process like? Because that was a wild game. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought they had it in the bag. I mean, the, the offense looked good. They were moving the ball. They were hitting uh, some of the Niners' weaknesses. They were struck. You know, the Niners struggled against the run all year, and the Lions were running the ball so well, which is why I thought, you know, they're going to be able to run out the clock. I didn't think there was going to be much chance of a, a, a comeback in the second half, but just so many things broke towards uh, the Niners' directions um, that it, you know, unfortunately, um, it broke, broke a lot of hearts in uh, Detroit uh, that week. Oh, no question about it. All right, you look at the roster. You mentioned it before, and I know you love watching the film and the All-22. What stands out about this roster when you watch the tape with this Lions team that maybe puts them at that upper echelon of the NFC? I think first is that offensive line. Um, you know, I think they're such a unique offensive line with um, how physical they are. Uh, but at the same time, they're an extremely athletic um, group too. And then you just have so many different types of weapons. Uh, Laporta, obviously, is going to be one of the top tight ends in the league for a long time. Uh, Jameer Gibbs just showed you how explosive a back he is, especially towards uh, the, the end of last season. Um, I, I do think. Um, where they struggled last year was corner depth. And I, I know they, they've addressed it with Amik Roberson and, and Carlton Davis, but um, I, I do think that, that, you know, that should be their number one priority heading into the draft is trying to get a young uh, top corner. All right. So, uh, you know, it, it's interesting because one minute we said corner 29, there's no question about it. Then, like you said, signing uh, Robertson, uh, bringing Cam, uh, uh, I should say Emmanuel Mosley back, Cam Sutton leaves, uh, and then and then trading for Carlton Davis. Then it's like, all right, maybe they don't need a corner. What about a wide receiver and offensive lineman? Uh, then they get Kevin Zeitler. By the way, I didn't even ask you about Zeitler. That's a, a heck of a pickup. What do you see on the tape from him with the Ravens and certainly in the Giants and in the past that makes him a fit with the Lions? Well, they, they run similar schemes. It's not, you know, they don't run option football, but um, the Ravens run a lot of gap scheme. Um, that requires uh, a little bit of a different skill set than um, a lot of these zone offensive linemen that we see around the league. Um, so he's just physical. He's able to move guys, and he fits right in with uh, what the Lions want to do. Um, and as far as corner, I, I just think that, you know, Carlton Davis has an injury history. Mosley has an injury history. Um, and even Robertson has missed some games. And I just think this defense um, – you know, they, he, he, they want to play man coverage and you have to have corners to do it. And if one or two guys goes down, you don't want to have to ch completely change your scheme. Uh, so I just think, I think, you know, still getting a young corner would be um, a really nice addition to the team. I think you can go luxury pick and get, get a, a wide receiver. If a really good wide receiver falls down uh, to 29 as well. Uh, but I just think a, a good young corner really completes this team. It's interesting, you know, many say, well, corners are fine, but you got to have, you have to have edge rushers to obviously distract the quarterback uh, to give the corners a chance. Aiden Hutchinson, of course, has had two marvelous seasons. You mentioned Davenport before. What, what makes you like this fit? Because he's been so injury, injury prone, but the Lions seem to know him from their, you know, their Saints days with him, Glenn and, and Campbell and certainly Alex Anzalone. What do you like about that pickup? He's just very, very physical. Um, I mean, when he's healthy, I, I would put him up there as one of the most physical um, ends in the league. He just has a strong punch. He could hold up tight ends in, in the run game. He could bull rush. Um, and, and, you know, Hutchinson's kind of a guy that does a little bit of both. But um, I, I think maybe that's the, the you know, the, that's the trait they look for in defensive ends. They want them to be physical, and, and Davenport brings that. Ted Wynn with us from theathletica.com uh, covers the entire NFL. Talking to little Lions on a uh, Tuesday. We mentioned all the guys that that uh, stayed and certainly some guys that they've signed. Jonah Jackson gets about over $17 million to go to the Rams. Thoughts on that? And obviously with Zeitler and, and Glasgow, do you think this offensive line could be even better even with Jonah Jackson leaving? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to keep all of your guys and, and the Rams. Um, they they want to upgrade their offensive line, which has been kind of a weak spot, but they got a lot better uh, surprisingly last season. So that hurts. But like you say, bringing in a guy like Zeitler at, you know, um, 
I, I don't have this contract in front of me, but I, I do remember it being a lot less than yeah. uh, what Jackson got. So when you're bringing in a guy that maybe could give you 80% of what he, uh, what Jackson gave you, but for uh, a fraction of the price, I mean, that's good value. Oh, I don't think there's any question. And you know, this, uh, Ted, this is kind of the Brad Holmes philosophy, isn't it? One year deals, you get Davenport for six, you get Zeitler for six. Jackson gets 17 for multiple years. Really the only guy, the Lions, really the only couple of guys the Lions have signed the last couple of years. Sutton got three years uh, last year. Anzalone got three, but that was on a second contract. And, uh, you know, Reader got two. So that's kind of the philosophy that the Lions and Brad Holmes have gone with. And it's worked, you know. Yeah, it's worked and they drafted well. And I think, you know, maybe their philosophy is, you know, we're going to be able to draft guys that can replace some of these guys if they leave. And if we are a free agent destination, if you guys do want to come, we'll be able to keep recycling these guys with, you know, one or two year contracts. Ted Wynn with us from The Athletic. Uh, give me some thoughts on the entire, I want to get into the NFC North in a second, but give me some thoughts on the pedigree or, or, or kind of the, 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 you know, the staircase there in, in the NFC and, and kind of the rankings. Where do you have the Lions? And, and do you see this as a team that could get to the Super Bowl this year? Yeah, I would say the Lions are the top team in the the North right now. Um, I think the Bears do. Um, the Bears are an improving team. Um, their defense started playing a lot better towards the end of last year, and they built this offense out perfectly for a young quarterback to come in. And it was a much different situation than the situation that Justin Fields came into. Um, they have Keenan Allen. They have DJ Moore. They have a couple of really good tight ends and Komet and Everett. The offensive line has really improved, um, and they signed DeAndre Swift, and they, ha they have a new offensive coordinator that at least gives them a good baseline over what gets he provided them. So uh, the Bears are a young ascending team. We'll see, you know, presumably it's going to be Caleb Williams. We'll see how he does in year one. I feel like, you know, he might be able to give them a bit, a bit of a spark, but, you know, with all, with all rookie quarterbacks, it's going to take some time. So I don't think they'll be really challenging this year, but they, they will be – they, they will be a feisty team. Uh, I think the big challenge will be coming from Green Bay. Um, you know, we saw how well Jordan Love played last year, and um, they have a very young team with a bunch of young receivers, and those guys, uh, you know, presumably are going to improve next year. And um, I think it'll Fleur is one of the best play callers in the league, and um, they, I think they, ha they have a very young, well-oiled team that could challenge the Lions, but – to me, the Lions are still top dog. It's interesting. Lions and the Packers both, for Vegas at least, were at 10 and a half wins on the uh, on the win total. So Vegas thinks it's going to be a dog fight down to the end. And it's just be interesting to see how Jordan Love handles now some pressure on him. I know last year mm -hmm. was sort of his first year, but you look good toward the end of the year, right? And um, you know, the, the, you mentioned that young offense. This is going to be a much different run for the Lions this year based on the schedule. And like you said, the division's much better, isn't it? Yeah, and like I said, it's, we'll see how Caleb Williams plays in, in his first year. He's set up for a really nice year, but he, it's going to be a wild card. But if he plays well, then that's going to be another really good team for the uh, the Lions to have to contend with. Thoughts on Minnesota, real fast, and uh, if you had a guess, are they trading up yeah. to get? Are they trading up to get JJ, or are they letting Darnold uh, play the first eight nine weeks? Uh, Minnesota is just, you know, one of those wild card teams. Is it's hard to predict where they're going to go. I mean, you know, they have Justin Jefferson, they have Addison, they have a a good core on offense, um, and you know, maybe Sam Darnold. Uh, you know, I, I I kind of have a little bit of hope for uh, Sam Darnold resurgence. Uh, so we'll see what happens with with Sam Darnold. But I think they're all in and getting a quarterback. I mean, that, I think that's the only reason why they went out and acquired that extra first round pick. So that they have the ammo to, to trade up uh, when things get a little bit more clear um, with us with the top of the draft. Uh, so I, I think they really are going to go try to shoot for uh, JJ McCarthy or, or Drake May if, if they fall to him. Um, and yeah, they're, they're another wild card team. I mean, I wouldn't put them in the same class as the uh, the Lions and, and the Packers, um, but um, I think Kevin O'Connell is one hell of a coach, and they have some talent there to to make some noise, but. Uh, we'll see what happens with the quarterback situation. And if they do get J.J. McCarthy, uh, to me, he's going to be a guy that needs a year to develop uh, before he can really play. So uh, if he's going to be their quarterback, I, I wouldn't 
see them as that much of a threat. It's amazing. And I, I'm not banging this JJ drum too loud, but people around here, as you know, because he led them to the national championship and Michigan's kind of the team here. They, they see no reason why he can't just step right in and play right away. It's it's wild to think you hear some opinions of, wait a minute, I have a, you know, Greg Cosell, I have a second round grade on him. You even mentioned that before. And then there's others that say, not only is he going to, is he going to get drafted? He should go in the top three and he should be playing right away. It's what's, it's, it's wild, the differing opinions on him. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he can play right away because he does need reps, but it doesn't mean he's going to be putting quality reps in and, and turning them to a contender um, right away. It's just going to be giving him reps for the sake of getting reps because he has a similar draft profile to Trey Lance. And I, I don't mean that as <laughs> oh, a, a bad thing <laughs> per se. I mean, it sounds bad, but yeah, it's just, it you know, he, they play, they played in the in similar situations, very strong teams with strong running games, strong defenses, but they didn't have a lot of reps on um, as starters in the, in their full year, full, full year starting their teams didn't depend on their arm, uh, to win them games. And Trey Lance needed reps to develop, and he never got those reps because of injuries and uh, different situations. Uh, so I think with J.J. McCarthy, you want to get him those reps as, as soon as possible. Want to ask Ted just a, a quick draft question about some players that he likes and also maybe what he's concerned about when he looks at the Lions. We'll do that coming up next here on a Tuesday, a Locked on Lions. But first, Lockdown Lands are brought to you by FanDuel today. Sports calendar is loaded right now. We got MLB uh, Major League Baseball underway. We got the Final Four this weekend. Hockey heating up. NBA getting close to the playoffs. All the excitement you want to get out of the action, you want to go to FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tournament, MLB, NBA, NHL and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a big win. Again, FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Ted, uh, you mentioned before, uh, we're talking to Ted Wynn from TheAthletic.com. Love having him on the show today. Uh, you mentioned before about Drake May. Any other any other guys in this draft that you say, man, I love this player, and wherever he goes, uh, it's going to be a great fit. Some, give me some names of some guys you like. I really like um, Braden Fisk from FSU, defensive tackle. You know, he's not going to get drafted in the first round. He might get drafted late in the first round, but he's probably going to get drafted more in that uh, second round range. But I just love watching him play. He's just so athletic and tenacious. Um you know, I could name all the, you know, Marvin Harrison Juniors, but I'm trying to name guys that yeah. more in that bottom of the first round type of guys. Uh, A.D. Mitchell, um, receiver from Texas. He's such a smooth route runner for a guy of his size, and he has strong hands. Um, and who knows? I mean, that could be a surprise line take at, at pick at 29. I, mean, yeah. I think the lines are a true, uh, true uh, best available type mm -hmm. of team. You know, a lot of teams preach that, but they'll end up – drafting uh, over drafting for need and, and whatnot but i think based on what the lions did last year um they're they're going to draft the the best on their board and, and maybe ad mitchell is that guy at 29 and, and they decide to um strengthen that that wide receiver group and maybe go corner in the second round um other guys that i like um i mean joe Alt is going to be one of the top picks but i mean i just love watching him just because he's you know six seven and just a freak of nature as far as um, how well he moves for uh, for a man of that size. Um, Blake Corum, running back uh, from Michigan, is, is a strong runner. I'm sure you know they have enough running backs in Detroit, but I'm sure uh, <laughs> they, they, they they love his attitude and what he brings for a team up there. Be interesting. Uh, you mentioned Mitchell before. I see the Lions as a, as a receiver candidate at 29. If Xavier Worthy is there at 29, you never know. The Lions love speed. Losing Josh Reynolds to the Broncos, um, I, I I see that uh, uh, for sure for the Lions. Uh, you know, maybe going wide receiver at 29. You know, look, and you know this, Ted. Last year, the Lions took a running back at 12, and everybody was up in arms. And I think that turned out to do that, that turned out pretty well for them. Yeah, no, I, I think um, the Lions aren't a very predictable team in the draft. So, you know, everybody's predicting corner, but, you know, we'll see what happens when uh, that 29th pick comes up. Final thing, 
you, you, we've, we've talked about how much you like the Lions and then you were on them early, obviously going from three wins to nine to 12 and then plus two with the playoffs. What concerns you? Is there anything that you look at roster wise and say they've, they've got to upgrade or or are you are you good with where they are right now? I think they just have some guys with um, an injury history, um, you know, especially in that that corner room, like we talked about. Um, so, you know, obviously they survived last year with a bunch of um, injuries to that that corner room, and they were just trying to figure stuff out in the fly, adjusting and playing a little bit more zone, and just throwing stuff against the wall. Um, but it, it's hard to survive when you just play, you have to play shootouts every week. And then, you know, when you're playing shootouts every week, it's up to chance sometimes. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way, um, kind of like the second half of that, that Niners game. So you, you want to improve on defense. You want to make a true run. So I, I think just their secondary health is the one thing that could go awry. Ted, great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, doing this and coming on today. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Ted Wynn with us. Follow him on Twitter and uh, check out his stuff at theathletic.com right here on a Tuesday at Lockdown Lines.